Matthew Hurst and taken by Reginald Johnson and he gets popped at the 21 yard line and we're underway from Las Vegas. The Lobos of New Mexico offensively first. Here's on the starting lineups, the Chile starting lineups. Look, the big ones up front, Shane Yeager is a second team all whack performer at tackle. Wallace, Tyner, Carson, and Brown round out the front five. The receiving core, Pascal Bowles has 13 touchdown catches. Bonwell and Messer join him in a three wide out set. And in the backfield, we've talked about Graham Lee, player of the year in the division. Jay Johnson, the fullback, Reginald Johnson, we just saw, is the tailback making his fifth straight start as Graham Lee has a look. You see the three wide out group. And they're going to try to run it on the first play. And they didn't get much. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe eking out a yard was Reginald Johnson as we take a look at the Buffalo's defense. The Rams defense of Colorado State, Ross Pollard, McKenzie, and Haggins has 10 sacks to lead that club up front. Kwame's a leading tackler with Taylor and Crowell. And in the secondary, five interceptions for Myron Terry to lead that group with Ramson, Olsen, and Engelstead. A yard gain by Johnson at second down and nine. Play fake, lead down the middle. First down toss out to the 33-yard line, and it's Bowles, his favorite receiver. No surprise so far what's happened in this uh, beginning of this game. New Mexico will change their offensive formation nearly every play. And when you watch North uh, New Mexico with the football, you can talk about all the different formations, but it's going to get back to Graham. He must be appropriately good today to beat this tough, tough Colorado State defense. And that front seven, they're the ones that have to ram the Wolfman. That's where the strength of the Colorado State defense is. First down, Gordon now has checked into the backfield. And he's going to get it on a draw play. Out to about the 38. We'll give him four. And it'll bring up second down and six. When you watch New Mexico play football offensively, what's pops out when you watch the films is number one they don't turn the ball over number two they run about every formation and every play that's ever been in college football they do it conservatively but they do it with flair that has been dennis franchoni's style you don't turn the ball over for this man and play football on offense as you see this game progress today you'll see more offensive sets and more variation on offense than we've probably seen all year yep. Right now, it's a two tight end set. And it's the fullback who's met head on. And Chris Shelton, I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. Real key if you're going to move the ball against uh, Colorado State is you must handle their defensive ends. Clark Hagens and Adrian Ross are the two bookends. And you remember, Sonny Lubick came from Miami. That was the cornerstone of that Miami defense when the Hurricanes were such a terror. They'll line their ends very wide and then force it into side to a real good group of linebackers. Larry Kerr, he'll stay in the same defense all day. Not a lot of changes from Colorado State. Third down conversions on the year for the Lobos. And out of the shotgun with Johnson in motion from the backfield. Lee in trouble. Got away from one man, and now he's going to tuck it in head for the stick, and he got there. Nice run, and that's what Lee can give you. He's got great wheels, an excellent rusher as well. He picked up seven in the first down. Adrian Ross coming around the corner is the guy that got his hand on Lee that time, but Lee brings the added dimension to this football game that really Moreno does not have. Adrian Ross going to come to the outside right here and watch Colorado State will drop into a zone on the play, but as Lee gets the ball in the pocket, there's a lot of space with this zone, and then you see the speed that Lee, ha Lee has to pick up those first downs. You will see option football in this football game. Right now, he's got all wide receivers and a first down at his own 45-yard line. Quick step back and had it swatted down and he caught his own pass. But he paid the price. Adrian Ross knocked it back to him. Well, it's good for your percentage, bad for your yard. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Nate Kwame who put him down as soon as he made the reception. Colorado State, the Rams were in a blitzing situation. And there you see Adrian, Adrian uh, Ross right there jumping up on a short pass. And you know, defensive backs really depend on linemen to help them on those short hitches to the outside. It's always something the quarterback has to do is throw it around those guys. So a throw and a completion, but a loss. And it's second down and 14. And again from the shotgun, Johnson in motion from the backfield. Lead quarterback draw. 
Dwayne Lee weaves across the 45, and he got leveled at the 46-yard line by Crowell, a linebacker. Picked up six. Well, you saw Adrian Ross. He'll line up to one side, number 44. Three sacks, an all-whack performer in the Pacific Conference, and I got to get used to this. Isn't Colorado State in the mountains? And uh, that's right. <laughs> they're in the Pacific. They're in the Pacific, and New Mexico is in the mountain. It division. seems backward, doesn't it? All right, I'm, I know there's a lot of whack fans, so I'm going to keep that straight all day. There's the player of the year in the Mountain Division, and he's got a third down of eight. He's looking at eight play of the Lobo drive from their own 47-yard line. That's time. Deep out and too deep. Intended for Bowles, it was nowhere near it. Yeah, he had Bowles that time, but you can see the style of defense at Colorado State. The Rams will run against everyone. They play a lot of zone drops. They really don't pattern read. They're just going to run. But when you're talking the mountains, New Mexico State ended up winning their division to get into that football game. Had an outstanding year at 9-2. and two. Really have been hot lately, too. Boy, that's for sure. Bloom to punt, averaging over 44 kicks, 12th in the country. Low snap, pressure, oh, he's oh. just got it away, and a penalty marker down. Going to be roughing the punter. On the other end, Darren Hall made the catch. Well, that low snap brought the pressure. Colorado State had the heat coming on the punter. And he took a big hit at the 37. You can hardly blame Joey Porter for trying to go for this block. It looked like he had it. Coming in that time, it wasn't Joey Porter, excuse me. Coming in real late that time, just trying to get the thing. He roughed him that time, and that'll cost him. Jumped right through, right through his hands. He missed it, and then we just couldn't quite tell if he tipped the ball. If he would have tipped it, it would not have been called at all. But John Howell is the guy that got a call, but it's hard to really blame him, don't you think? Yep, yep. You got to go for it there, especially on that snap. As it is, what a turnaround. Instead of having the ball, it's the Lobos maintaining possession and moving all the way down to the Rams. 38-yard line. Three wide receivers. This is still a linebacker out here over the slot. Mismatch over there, but Lee runs it the other way. When you watch the Lobos, it's almost like playing sandlot football when you're a kid. I'm going to throw it some. I'm going to run it some. I'm the guy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and no much for that. It, 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 as New Mexico's success this year, as you look at their standings in the Mountain Division, you know, their big wins late in the year, especially over BYU, got them into this football game. Right. But they put away a lot of ghosts this year. SMU they beat, you know, and winning their games. But you're right. When uh, Graham Lee gets in the huddle, it's almost like he's drawing them in the dirt back there. Uh -huh. He says, hey, I brought the football, so I get to call the plays, you know? <laughs> it's my ball, and I'll take it home if I want to. And there's what he's done on the season. 24 touchdowns. Is that a song? It's my ball? No, it's something like that. <laughs> it's my party, and I'll yeah, right. if I want to. <laughs> Nate Kwame is the guy that's down, and he is their leading tackler, over 100 on the year, and we've been seeing him play ball. Uh, since he was a freshman. We did see him as a freshman, you're right. And that'd be a tough loss for this uh, Ram defense. Well, this is the first of three on ABC. Don't forget, coming up a little bit later on, Dr. Pepper will bring you the Big 12 championship as second rank Nebraska takes on the team we saw last week, the Aggies of A&M. And then tonight, from the Georgia Dome, will be the SEC championship. Auburn takes on Peyton Manning in third rank Tennessee. Triple header on our championship Saturday here on ABC and Nate Kwame coming off the junior out of Windsor, Colorado and he's still not coming off very quickly. Got a lot of Ram fans and Ram coaches right now probably holding their breath about Kwame. He looks to be telling the trainers that he had turned his ankle to the inside is what it looks like he was telling them. And that would be a big chunk, as Gary said, out of their defense. Eric Vaughn will come in to take his spot. He's an all-whack performer for this defense right there. You can see on his sock, that's the one that got hurt. What does that say on the side of his sock there? Does that say dad? Or I saw it real quick. I'm not, I'm not sure. Might be. He might have wished he would have put mom over there. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> we'll check on Kwame or Dino. You well, can't do that. I'm trying to make a point. You I just know. Be laughing right it's there. not funny that he's in there, but <laughs> hopefully he'll be back in there. Second and four. I backfield this time with two tight ends and some motion on the offensive front. 
might have been Jager, the tackle. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yards, still second down. Dennis Franchoni looking on, the sixth year head coach, WAC coach of the year in his division. Jager with that illegal procedure penalty, jumping out of his stance. And it backs it up now to a second down and nine. Well, they, they survived one of these plays before, but you can see as you watch this game unfold already, how New Mexico comes out in a different group of players in a different formation nearly other time. This forces the linebacker to line up over that slot again. They thought about a little bit of uh, option going to the left side, and he kept it instead. You know what? That is exactly what it is. It is an option play. The defensive end that time, Adrian Ross, stayed with the back. And Graham Lee, now most people that watch options, you pitch it backwards. Right. But this would have been a downfield option out of shotgun. And if you're going to run a lot of shotgun, you have to be able to establish some running plays. So far, we've seen a lead draw to the quarterback and now an option play out of the shotgun. And that's Dennis Darnell, the offensive coordinator, who has had some quarterbacks here that he's had run every type of play. And he says Graham Lee does about everything pretty well. Yes, he does. He's driven them. On an 11 play mark so far, it's third down and two. Brad, look at the corner right here, Ethan Ranson. He's lined up like there's a wide receiver. That's how pattern read this defense is for Colorado State. They're going to come back to throw. Lee loads it. He's got a man wide open, and he dropped it. It was Tony Duran, the tight end, and he was backpedaling. The pass was a little bit low, but he didn't hold on. Has a great read by Graham Lee that time. He wanted to go down the middle and hit the other tight end that time, Hemphill. But not there, came back to his third ride receiver, put the ball right in the bread basket, and he coughed it up. And that's going to bring out Colby Kaysen, who's 19 out of 27 on the year. His long of the year is 42, and this one's going to be from 47. And there's really no win to speak of in this football game. Graham Lee, the quarterback, is the holder. Kaysen, and they fake it. Lee looking for a pooch pass, and he's going down. Easton Ransom stayed home and made the tackle. And Colorado State will take over. Brad, the Buffaloes tackled or knocked down Aaron I did that Nettles. earlier. Buff it's a ram. <laughs> oh, we can't do that. People will <laughs> oh kill us goodness, back in right. Fort Collins. Aaron Nettles that time is the guy he wanted to pitch it to right there in the middle of your screen. He gets knocked down on the play. When he tried to not pitch it to him, there was nothing there. Ram fans, we apologize. That's right. So now Colorado State will start from its own 32-yard line. We'll check the Ram starting group after this snap. Moses Moreno is the quarterback. He's going to give it. Damon Washington, he got about two. And then he got a whole bunch of Lobos. Bill Borchers made the stop. Let's check the Chile starting lineup. For the Rams of Colorado State, the Biggins up front. They've got a good group. Newell is the leader there at center. Cesario, Dundee, Salpiea, and Bally. In the wideout spots, Darren Hall right now is averaging 23 yards a catch with Turner, Workman, and Ewell as they start a two tight end set. Washington, the lone setback with Moses Moreno, the player of the year in the Pacific Division of the Western Athletic Conference. Second down and nine. Here's a delay, a counter to Washington. He got one block and then ran into his old man and got across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Billy Austin made the tackle defensively for the Lobos of New Mexico. Here's how they look. Double-figure sacks up front for Garrison, Taylor, Borchers, and Wingate join him. The linebackers, Blake Irwin's a leading tackler with Bernard. It's a 4-2-5 defense in the secondary. Ramos McDonald, probably the best cover man back there with Woods, Austin, McGarrahan, and Stanton. Moses Moreno, he'll work from the shotgun now. Third down and long. And he's in trouble. Down he goes. Back to the 30. Wanted to throw it and didn't. 
And working maybe with kind of a bad right arm, Dean. Is that correct? Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that right elbow. He's had that injured. Told me yesterday that it was killing them earlier in the week. They drained a lot of fluid out of it Tuesday. He actually did not throw on Tuesday and Wednesday. Told me before the game today he feels good with it. By the way, good news for Kwame, the linebacker for Colorado State. It's a sprained ankle. More tape on it. He's back in. Guys beginning to sprinkle down here a little bit. Oh, boy. Hopefully not like our Texas Texas a and <laughs> game a week That's ago. That's right. Tell you what, it's cool enough here. Those sprinkles could turn to ice crystals. Here's another low snap on a punt. Lowe's got it away, and he hung a dandy up there. Chad Smith waits on it at the 21. Oh, oh, what a hit. He got leveled by Adrian Ross on the special teams. No score here, first quarter. Try Chili's Ranch Hand Filet, a beautifully carved eight ounce tenderloin, slow grilled to perfection and placed on awesome blossom strings. Served with skillet potato cakes and grilled veggies, only at Chili's. Trust. We are not born with an instinct to trust. Trust must be earned. Trust must be proven. We earn it with integrity. We prove it with sound advice. Trust is the ultimate measure of our success. And at Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Dodge Ram gives you the most powerful overall line of pickup engines on the planet, including two even more powerful V8s, the most powerful diesel, and the only V10. You'll be glad to know we also worked on this, making it easy to answer the oft-asked question, wow, what have you got under there? Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. National Geographic presents Aiden Quinn. Dr. Livingston, I presume? Yes. Forbidden territory. Stanley Search for Livingston, ABC Sunday. Back in Las Vegas, no score with 8.16 left. First quarter of the WAC championship matchup. And the Lobos of New Mexico had a long drive and then ran a fake field goal and were stopped. And they'll begin now inside their own 25. They last played a couple of years ago, win by New Mexico in an upset in a series that is now 46 games old, including today's. When they have a fullback in the backfield in eye, they usually fake it to him or give it to him. Option. A run option, and he got a nice block. The fullback, and he springs Lee loose. Graham Lee down the sideline. No surprise here. 35 yards for Lee. Brad, you know we talked to Larry Kerr, and he knew that when they had op I formation equaled option football. Here it is. This is just an outside load option where Shelton that time got the block on the man responsible for the quarterback and sprung Lee, who's faster than he looks. You asked Larry Kerr, how many times will we see the option yeah, right. from New Mexico today? He said, we hope only once. <laughs> well, well, I got news for you. Good to see it again. You bet. Yep. 58 yards on six carries already for Graham Lee. And he's got a first down at the 41-yard line. Here it comes again. This time he pitches it. And that one only got about a half yard for Reginald Johnson. Make no mistake, the Ram football team is a very physical football team. I really enjoyed watching them play in the Holly Bowl twice. Yep. And you can see New Mexico makes a, their offense go by doing it with first down plays. That's really the key to the football game. But Colorado State will hit you. We remember that Kansas State game. Oh that was a vicious football game. And the Rams never backed down in that game. They put the Kansas State quarterback out in that you one. You bet. Second down and 10. Here's what they've done on first down today. This looks like a passing formation, but they've ran five to four times out of it. He throws this time, and he throws a dart out to the 34-yard line to Bonwell. Picked up seven. Still short of the first down by a couple. To show you how many times Bowles gets the ball on this team, that's the only the fifth catch for Bonwell all season. 
So that predominantly goes through Pascal Bowles' hands and the quarterback's hands for this offense. Well, Bowles had caught 65 coming in for almost 1,200 yards. And it's a third down and three. This is where an offense like this can really drive you crazy because they can do so many things. They've got four wideouts. Colorado State is in a blitz, blitz look here. And Lee now comes up under center. Still in it. No free safety. They'll be coming with linebackers. Here they come. He throws a quick out. Got his man. Bowles first down at the 28. Graham Lee did a great job of reading that play that time. Oh, it's he not knew Bowles. they were going to come with the blitz and just came out that time and said, Bonwell, you have to get the ball. It's going to come right out here. You know you're going to get the blitz from these two linebackers. You break it off. I'll throw you the ball to the outside. You see, not a lot of press coverage. Myron Terry had to make the tackle, but it was still for a first down. So he's used Bonwell twice on well, this drive. You know, I mean, when you watch the films of these guys, you just figure he's going to throw the ball to Bowles. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think Colorado State figured that too. Look at how wide this corner is right here, Ransom. He's in the middle of the field. There's no wide receiver right there. He's on the left hash. The ball is on the right hash. Two tight end set. They go with a straight running play this time. And maybe inside the 25 and 24 is Deion Marion. New Mexico will rotate their running backs today through much of the day, including Marion, who has his first catch there. Coming up Monday, Hugh Downs takes you on an incredible journey to Egypt. Have they discovered the descendants of the pharaohs and what is their amazing secret? All new tales from the tomb Monday on ABC. Then it's the Cowboys and the Carolina Panthers on Monday Night Football. <laughs> Looks like Hughes was in the tomb when he got that shot. <laughs> Lee throws on the run, complete this time to Bowles inside the 15 and down to the 13-yard line. And that's a first down, Lobo. So interesting to talk to the coaches in this football game. Larry Kerr and his defense knew exactly what New Mexico was going to do. They were going to throw the ball to Bowles, and they were going to do the option football and sprint out passes to Bowles. So what's working? Option football, sprint outs, and throw the ball to Bowles. Knew what was coming, but you got to stop it. That's right. Just like you know, you used to know that Muhammad Ali jab was coming, <laughs> but you couldn't stop it. Right now, the Lobos got their jab working. They do. See if they get a knockout here from the 13. First and 10. Their red zone offense has been very successful. That's Bowles in motion. And penalty marker out of play. And New Mexico is going to have to back up. Snap. Illegal snap. Offense. Five yards. Still first down. So it's going to be first and 15. Let's check in with Dean. As you know, the, the nickname of Bowles is, is Velcro. And it reminds me, Gary and I were talking about coming out here. Remember, there's a, a player for the Oakland Raiders many years ago, Lester Hayes. Remember, he had the uh, stick, stick him on his sure. Same deal. So I think the, here's the deal with the, with the Velcro. You got this guy can catch anything. It doesn't matter where. Oh! But anyway, he can really catch the football. Hey, you caught two out of three. <laughs> Not bad. bad. <laughs> there he is. And he has one catch that's gotten him to this point. Although with a penalty now, they're back up to the 18-yard line. Lennox Gordon in as the tailback in the eye now. On the option, Lee keeps. He'll lose a yard at least. Woo! Jamie Bennett put a lick on him. <laughs> Good thing it's not like basketball where you have to come out if your jersey gets bloody because Lee's already bleeding from about three different spots. I tell you, Willie Taylor was all over that play too. It was an option play to the, in the inside. Willie Taylor, the middle linebacker, just ate that play up from the inside. Good front seven defense, and that's what Sonny Lubick and Larry Kerr is really depending on from this football team. They do not play an aggressive attacking style secondary, but they sure do do it with their front seven. We've got a timeout with 4.53 remaining first quarter. Lobo's on a drive, but we're still scoreless. A company most people never heard of is changing the way we fight cancer and kidney failure by inducing the body to produce blood cells chemotherapy and anemia patients are gaining new strength helping to grow blood cells helped amgen become the world's largest biotech company where do you learn about companies with such pioneering spirit nasdaq 
shaping the new world of investing. Even though Dodge Ram is the bright red gold standard of pickup trucks, we're always improving things. We've made our available Magnum V8s even more powerful. We've improved the already world-class interior. In all, we've made 130 improvements to the Ram lineup since introduction, including this one, our new flow-through ventilation system. New Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. Vacation travelers know that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. National Car Rental. Especially if you're planning to go to the Walt Disney World 25th Anniversary Celebration. Because as the official car rental company of Walt Disney World, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go to the Walt Disney World 25th Anniversary with National Car Rental. But hurry, the celebration ends January 31st. ABC Sports presentation of the WAC Championships brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. By the U.S. Army, be part of the toughest, smartest Army in the world. Be all you can be. By Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. And State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, and Dean Blevins and our ABC crew from Las Vegas, where the Rams of Colorado State and the Lobos of New Mexico still scoreless first quarter with 453 remaining and New Mexico with a second down and long coming up after the official stop play momentarily the drive's taken 57 yards in seven plays so far this is the second time the Lobos have gotten down in scoring territory remember they faked a field goal were stopped short and have now gotten it back and marched it down to the 20. Pascal Bowles is right here. You can see it. No defensive back. You can tell it's zone defense by the look. Lee drops to throw. Goes to the end zone and just off the fingertips. Uh, Hemphill is tight in. Hemphill ran a streak down the middle of the play uh, of the pattern that time. Bowles went up the other side. And when you watch Graham Lee throw this football, he got it just a bit too high. Look at the Colorado State defenders watching the ball. If that one would have been thrown just a little bit lower, Hemphill could have got it between before Myron Terry got across. Hemphill has caught four touchdown passes this year. And he's the kind of big play tight end averaging over 24. Again. Well, the New Mexico tight ends have only caught 10 passes all year. Six for touchdowns. Not a bad ratio. Yeah. Shotgun. Lee to the end zone. Nobody home out there. That was a bad throw, but you know what it was? It was a safe throw, and I think Coach Franchoni would like that from his quarterback. Listen, when you don't have a chance to score seven points, let's make sure we get a chance to get three points on the play, and that's what Graham Lee did here. Taylor drops back so deep that the ball is forced a little high, and there's no way anyone's going to catch that football. we got a chance, I think, for a real field goal this time. I think so, too. Colby Kaysen comes in. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt. And he's got it to open the score. 440 left in the first quarter. Colorado State has trailed just once in their seven-game winning streak. That was 3 to nothing to San Diego State. They trail 3 to nothing to New Mexico now. A lot of industry experts told us that the passenger side was the best place to add a third door. We got still more advice insisting that the driver side was the only logical choice. But as you can see, we let it all go right in one ear and out the other. Introducing the new Dodge Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. Oh boy, this is my favorite scene. Ooh, scary. There she is. Get her, get her. Hey, keep it down. Excuse me, it's very difficult to enjoy a movie when you're talking and shushing at me. All the characters from the new movie Anastasia are now at Burger King. One cool toy just $2.59 with any value meal purchase. Your kids can collect all four. This part always gets me. Oh. oh. 
You can keep your car looking clean, but you've got to keep your engine clean, too. Newly formulated Valvoline DuraBlend motor oil is a synthetic blend that suspends the dirt, unburned fuel, and water that cause harmful deposits and reduces oil burn-off. DuraBlend protects vital engine parts, so your engine runs cleaner and better longer. It outperforms all leading conventional motor oils because a car can look great. But it's what's inside that counts. Valvoline DuraBlend. Smith Barney remembers the 96 WAC championship, the inaugural WAC title game last year, fourth quarter. Wyoming quarterback Josh Walwer hooks up with a touchdown pass, gave Wyoming the lead, fourth quarter. Ethan Potsman's 20-yard field goal, no time left, tied it at 25, and an OT, he does it again, this time from 32 yards out, and the Cougars win it 28-25 in overtime. Oh, yeah, just a typical WAC football yep, game. Down to know? the last play of the last... Overtime. There's really nothing better than championship football games. When something matters in a game, that's when you see these guys, these players that played for state high school championships, now they're playing for a, a league championship. There is great intensity on the football field. Mike Ross to kick. And he got all of this one. Darren Hall, about three yards deep, will bring it out. And he's got a seam. Hall across the 30. Stiff arm, the kicker. And he goes across the 45, and he's got a great return out to the 46-yard line. Brad, Darren Hall did such a nice job of coming out this way and then coming back the other way. Watch, that sets up his blockers, catches it, starts out to his right, and then swings back to his left to set up his blockers. That was a planned play. Give the special teams and the coaching staff a nice uh, kudos on that because he really set up his blockers and created the seam himself with the kickoff. Nice execution. Longest kickoff return allowed by New Mexico this year. Just outside the 45-yard line, the Rams set up shot, trailing by three. Moreno, plenty of time in the pocket, goes complete across midfield to his tight end, Eli Workman. Well, funny, the ball should go to Workman because when you look at this Colorado State offense, more Moses to an end because this offensive football team for the Rams features the tight end. There's one tight end, two tight ends, sometimes three tight ends in the field. And the Las Lobos, these guys need to get some turnovers. That's what they need. They've got a great secondary. There's five of them. And to stop this offense, they're going to need to turn the ball over. So Colorado State after that great kick return already in the Lobos end of the field of the 48-yard line. Damon Washington took a hit in the backfield and he got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Joe Haynes made the tackle. Well, you talked about that overtime game last year and all the enthusiasm in that WAC championship. It's a little bit different today, Dean. Yeah, it really is. That was a wonderful atmosphere a year ago. We had a packed house. You know, this year, guys, it's, it's, there are more empty seats than in an L.A. Clippers basketball game. <laughs> Several reasons. There aren't many hotel rooms here because they have the national finals rodeo, some conventions, limited flights are in from Albuquerque and Colorado. Also, Dave Blitz's Lobo basketball team playing UCLA later today, and some yep. people are wanting to watch that. Maybe a bowl game is a factor, too, huh, Brad? Exactly. Both of them already know they're going to a bowl game, and a lot of people are saving their dough to do that. Moreno is going to be just buried back at the 49-yard line. Third down has been a problem in that pocket. Third down has been a problem, but Brad, this was going to be a quarterback draw this time. The last time on third down, they tried to throw a screen pass. This time, a quarterback draw, and I think he ran right into the back of Steve Dundee, number 78. There you see it. A blitz from the inside that time. Could not handle it, and Moreno had nowhere to run on that play. And a very aggressive defense so far. Gary Patterson is running. You can see it when you're aggressive. It produces sacks. And they got one there to force the punt. Fourth and seven, almost jumped in the neutral zone, but they got back. Loads the kick. Oh, and he man. hit it a mile in the air. Chad Smith camps under it. This one almost brought drizzle, and he gets it at the 10-yard line with a fair catch. Great kick. And nice coverage downfield. New Mexico leading by three. And the Lobos take over. Well, New Mexico for years could always score and have good offensive football. But Dennis Franchoni turned the football game team around and the program around by putting defense at New Mexico. They finished second in the WAC this year, only giving up 310 yards. And you can see it, a game, only in a, and you can see it so far in this football game, a very powerful Ram offense is having trouble figuring out this football team. 
I don't want to say the quarterbacks are getting abused, but Moses Moreno was bleeding on the sideline, too. <laughs> Here's a hit inside. Whew. There's some hitting going on. Adrian Ross, one of the first there, as Reginald Johnson didn't get much. Well, not only did Dennis Franchoni turn around this New Mexico program that had won nine out of 50 games prior to him coming, but he's done it before at Pittsburgh State with the Gorillas, Southwest Texas, and New Mexico. Now you see it, how he has turned programs around. That is a skill, and he does it with a lot of discipline. As Dean mentioned, we came out here and watched practice. There wasn't a sound. There was a lot of concentration and a lot of guys that wanted to win this football game. Well, the three of us were whispering on the sideline of right. practice. We didn't want to interrupt anybody. Second down nine from the 11-yard line. Three wide out set. Now the back shift as Lee changes things up at the line. He's going to have to hustle. And he has run out of time. Yeah. Took too long on the auto. Well, that time the Rams were kind of showing a blitz look. A lot of players will show it sometimes and not come. And I think he confused Lee. Dead ball. Delay of game. Offset. Five yards. Still. That backs it up. That's a tough spot to be in now, back at the six-yard line. Third penalty against New Mexico, all on the offense. They come out with the same formation. Looks like Lee is trying to make the defense commit before he does things. He's having a look. And slowly up to a second down and 14. Draw play from his own end zone, going nowhere. Adrian Ross, the first guy there again, and then he got help from his friends. Well, I'll tell you, when you want to talk defense, and we talked about it in the open, Sonny Lubick has changed the WAC conference. I mean, there's no mystery how this CSU program has turned around. Yes, they run the ball. Yes, they score points. But Sonny has brought defense at Colorado State, and they live off that. And I think Sonny has changed the WAC conference forever now. A lot of people thought you could only win by tossing the ball around. Yeah. He's shown you can do win other ways. And he forces a third down at 15. If Lee throws now, it'll be from his own end zone. The out is complete, but it's not enough. Got it out to the 15. Completes it to Bowles, but they're going to have to punt. See, that's the type of defense that you want. Yeah, you can have your completion. That's like being behind three points in the game in basketball, and you let the guy make a two-point yep. basket. Bowles is going to come out, run about a 10-yard out. You see the DBs. They're going to give him the thing. Ethan Ransom comes up, makes a kick, makes the hit, punt the football. So Bloom in the kick. Darren Hall, number 83, right there, waiting on it for the Rams. They got the punter the last time, remember? This time they've got the return on it. It's a terrible punt off the side of his foot. Might take a good hop, though, and it does. Sometimes those kicks end up being better. Took a tremendous bounce in the Lobos' favor. And it goes back near the 38-yard line. Ends up being a 45-yard punt. No score as the first quarter has come to a close. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. There comes a time when you realize you've come about as far as you can on your own. And if you want your investments to go further, you're going to need someone with the expertise and the resources to help you go the distance. It's not an admission of failure. It's an admission of success. It's an acknowledgement of what you've got at stake here. That moment of truth when you say to yourself, okay, no more fun and games. Smith Barney, they make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. National Car Rental presents The Drive for the National Championship. The year 1969, college football centennial season. Second-ranked Arkansas hosted top-ranked Texas in the game of the century. The Longhorns trailed 14 to nothing entering the fourth quarter. But led by quarterback James Street, Texas scored 15 unanswered points to claim the victory. Head coach Darrell Royal accepted the national title from President Nixon. Let's go! As a business traveler, you can choose from thousands of places to stay. But when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. National Car Rental. Because when you join National's Emerald Club, you can bypass the counter, choose your own car, and get on the road fast. 
So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental. You're watching ABC. This holiday season, British Airways will bring five million people together. Mark and Brian, Super Bowl ticket finalist on Monday Night Live at 9. Well, the WAC championship first quarter was all Lobos. New Mexico leading only 3-0, but they pretty much dominated. The Rams are going to have to go deep and spread this defense out here pretty quick. Toss. Run on the left side. Kevin McDougal. Jamel Woods knocked him out of bounds. Colorado look, State, their first few plays didn't get them much. No, they haven't. And, and Colorado State is trying out, come trying to pound the ball against them, and they have not had any success. Consequently, the first half, the first quarter, excuse me, looks like that. That that's not good. It's good for one side, not good for the other side. Yeah, exactly. Talked about how these two teams stacked up and compared so equally statistically throughout the year, and so far the first 15 minutes certainly hadn't been that way. One of the few times you'll see Colorado State with no tight end on the field. Four wide outs on a second and one for Moreno. Down the middle, got his man inside the 35, Corey McCoy, with a catch and a pickup of 20. Four wide outs on the field. That's called a skinny post. It's like a seam pattern. It's kind of a bend to the inside. Moreno says, hey, I've tried to run a screen. I've tried to run a quarterback draw. Let me try to do something I like to do once in a while. <laughs> he zips it down there. The ball came loose after the catch. And the balance has been unbelievable. It's always been that way. That's what Sonny Lubick and his two coordinators, Dave Lay, Dave Lay, who left a year ago, and now Steve Fairchild is taken right over the same way. Breaks, breaks down to 50.5% on the ground, 49.5% in the air. And here's McDougal around the corner. And a penalty marker down at the end of the play. He had some lead blockers out in front. It's going to be a holding call. I, I thought it was a face mask at the end of the play, too, though, but it, it doesn't look like it was going to get called on it. It is a holding call against Colorado State. ABC's college football is online live from today's championship games at the half. You can chat with Dean Blevins right here from the game. All in America online. Keyword ABC Sports. What? Tell Ble you what. Blevins going to make more money at halftime? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dean, what do you got going? Uh, you know, that reminds me of my A&W root beer days when I was paid 50 cents an hour. I get a little bit more than that for my halftime gig today. All right. It sounds good. Let's call it, Gary. Let's get online. Yep. Dean, how's the, how come I'm always slicing the ball when I take off the drive? <laughs> well, if I knew the answer to that, Major I wouldn't be sitting in the end zone all back to the 37 yard line. At the 37. First, first down with the penalty. Now the tight end switches over. Ewell on the right side. Moreno drops the throw. Has some trouble in there. Now runs out of the pocket and slides. Moreno, the ball carrier. After about a yard gain. Kenny Lewis putting the heat on him. Kenny Lewis. Up from his linebacking position to make the tackle on the Kenny play. Kenny no Lewis gain. is a transfer from Texas that has come to this team. And Brad, you know, we talk about the Lobos playing a lot of people up front. 11 different guys will play defensive tackle or defensive end. But the linebacker position is also tr uh, shared throughout this football game. Irwin and Kenny, uh, Blake Irwin and Kenny Lewis will rotate it. Gary Robinson says to be good in the fourth quarter, we got to play a lot of guys. It has been a good game plan. Second down and 15. May have been some movement in the front. No flags down, though. McDougal follows his blockers well down inside the 30-yard line. McDougal and Washington are really quite a tandem. Damon Washington over 1,000 yards. McDougal, by the time the day's over, who knows, because he put up some pretty impressive numbers this year as well. Came in with 856 on the ground and 10 touchdowns. Yeah, and he, he's one of those guys that could very easily put on one of those games that uh, you, know, you could have two backs in this type of football game put on 100 yards. Yep. At the 30, here's the first big third down of the day. 
for the Rams of Colorado State. Third and eight, two tight ends in the game. Think a lot of bootleg action in this situation. Hall's to the top of your screen. He's their big play wide receiver. And now, did Moses Moreno get the timeout call before the penalty flags flew in or not? Well, Eric Bailey, at the same time that Moreno was calling a timeout, thought it was the snap count. So Colorado State got away with it. Penalty marker over on the 30-yard line, and that's what the officials are talking about. Which came first, the flag or the timeout? The chicken or the egg? <laughs> timeout, I guess, is what Ken Flaherty is going to say. So we'll take a timeout as well. With 12.58 remaining in the first half, the timeout just in time for Colorado State. Hey, help me figure this out. Usually the more gizmos you want, the more money you got to spend. Then there's a Chevrolet Cavalier. It gives you a lot of the same gizmos that make expensive cars easy to live with for about half the price. If you forget to lock your doors, the Cavalier is still protected by a gizmo called the theft deterrent system. If you leave your dome light on, it turns it off. My house doesn't even do that. Get the car that's easy to own, a Cavalier. Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, chili, baby back, really. I want my baby back, chili, baby back, really. Barbecue sauce. I want my baby back, chili, baby back, really. I want my baby, chili, baby back, really. Barbecue sauce. I got my baby back. Chili's grills like no place else. Got a big man on your holiday list? One who needs to travel great distances with confidence? Well, Napa has everything you need, including this heavy-duty 30-piece ratcheting bit driver set. Only $9.99. And while you're here, load up on some great gifts for the kids. But don't wait till the night before. The best toys get scooped up fast. Like Napa's 18th edition toy truck with real truck sounds. Just $16.99 for a limited time. Only at the Ho Ho Holiday Sale. Going on now at Napa. In this jungle, the only thing wilder than the animals who roam free is the man who calls it home. The Jungle Book, ABC Sunday at 7, 6 Central. 12.58 left in the half. Lobos lead by three. Colorado State trying to answer. Here's their third down and eight to go. Turner and Hall. The wideouts right and left. Moreno wants to come back to Turner, get some heat again. Now he does throw long, his tight end's out there, but he threw it away. Eli Workman was the closest man. And Moses is frustrated right now. Well, Kenny Lewis that time, the linebacker, knocked off Paul Turner, who was trying to run a slant pass to the bottom of the screen. When Moreno tried to turn back and throw the ball, there was nobody to throw to, actually. Turner just ran right into Lewis. Uh, Lewis didn't even see him. He wasn't even looking at the receiver on that play. Colorado State's going to try to tie it up. Derek Franz is pretty long for him. It's a 47-yard attempt. As Linger to hold, kick. Made it. Not by much. His longest this year had been 33 yards, and he just knocked in a 47-yard field goal to tie the game. Well, you don't have to make it by much. It's like one of those putts that roll in the front of the, <laughs> front of the cup. Well, they had to settle for a field goal, at least on third down, because at the bottom of the screen right here, you're going to see Turner. He wants to come in on a slant pass. Watch him run into Kenny Lewis right here by accident. Kenny Lewis doesn't even see him, kind of run into each other. Moreno tries to turn for that throw. There was no one there. Kind of defense by accident yep. on that one. So Moreno can't get the job done as far as getting it in the end zone, but his kicker has just tied it up with his best kick of the year. Comes at a nice time. Three three, the Rams and the Lobos, with 12:43 remaining in the first half. Well, both coaches expected a low-scoring football game in the, in this game, and I and I think we're getting it. We never believe them, though. No, we way. don't. <laughs> <laughs> we always go right, coach. Right, yeah. coach. Reginald Johnson and Jamie Oliver are back, waiting on the kick, high and short. 
Going to have to hustle just to get there. At the 17, a running grab by Oliver. And now Oliver cuts across the 35 out to the 40-yard line. Short kick, nifty return, and New Mexico in a good spot to start offensively. Coming up tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 out here, will be season premiere, Payne Weber College Basketball. The Kansas Jayhawks will take on the Terrapins of Maryland. Rafe friends and Paul Pierce, they're pretty tough. I saw them up in Chicago this week, and Maryland's got four starters coming back, too. So college hoops coming up tomorrow on ABC Sports. We get our basketball season going. Best field position to start a drive today for New Mexico. Just inside its own 42-yard line. Three wide outs to the top of your screen and one to the bottom. The way they started the game, four wide outs, a quick drop, and they throw back the other way to Messer. And he takes it for a first down down inside the 46-yard line. Pick up a 14. Well, if you look at his number, number 12, he was a quarterback, but he's going to be a wide receiver for the rest of his career at New Mexico. But, you know, the whole state of New Mexico, especially Albuquerque, is so fired up. they got a good football team playing in a bowl game and uh, you know I guess their basketball team isn't bad either is it? Tell you what they got a kid named Kenny Thomas that can flat fill it one of the real great players a double double type of guy put up 20 points on you and 10 rebounds and there as Dean said they're going to be facing uh, UCLA later that's today. Right. So that's a huge day in sports for the folks from New Mexico. You know it's a it's a huge channel clicker day if you're mm -hmm. in New Mexico you just sit on that that's couch right. and take in the <laughs> WAC championship first and then uh, Go right from there to basketball. Now you see they're ranked eighth in the country. Uh oh, let's get this team out of here right here. Okay, they're, oh. they're, they're going to go down here, aren't they, well, a little bit? Yeah, they kind of took it on the chin in <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Katie will bring them back. Yep. Graham Lee is limping a little bit. Both quarterbacks, as I said, have been abused in this first half. Well, that, that, that takes option football right out of it. This will be a running play. I'll bet it. Yeah, yeah, he cannot get he back. can barely get back he's, to give the handoff to he's Gordon. He's done. He's done. The play before Graham Lee, I think it was Joey Porter landed on the back as he jumped on his back, landed on his right ankle, and that looks like a bad twist right there. And at least I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't, New Mexico doesn't take a timeout and figure out what to do. That's exactly what they're going to do, Gary. They just call a timeout from over to the sideline. Messer, the wide receiver, who we talked about being the third quarterback, has called a timeout. Lee limping badly to the sideline with 11-19 to go in the half. Innovation played a very important part in Anheuser-Busch's success in Anheuser-Busch's history. Back in 1876, when Budweiser was first produced, Adolphus Busch knew that temperature was the enemy of beer. He was innovative enough to produce a fleet of refrigerated railroad cars, refrigerated with ice, with ice stations along the rail sidings to keep the beer cool as he shipped it across the United States. And that was one of the keys to the success of Budweiser, controlling the temperature of the product. Innovation, trying new things, being on the frontier of new ideas, has been and will always be a key in the success of Anheuser-Busch. I understand you've got a bug problem. <laughs> Daddy! I want you to meet my friend. Dad, phone call. Who's the IRS? Sir, is this your son? Is this your dog? Your life is full of worries. Your car shouldn't be. Get a Chevy Lumina. It's reliable, comfortable, and it's one less thing to worry about. Sir, is this your house? Heck, Lumina can even save you a grand. Sir? ABC Sports presentation of the WAC Championship. Brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. By Domino's, delivering a million smiles a day. By Nicorette Gum. You can do it. Nicorette can help. 
And by Dean Witter. There are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Brad, Eric Jaworski's on the football field, the backup quarterback, and he has great bloodlines. Got a cousin, uh, is it he, Ron? He's a cousin of, of no, not, not Ron. Not it, Ron. It, it's Terry Jaworski, the wrestling coach. <laughs> Here he is, Little Jaws, <laughs> and he gets abused at the 42-yard line <laughs> as he keeps it on the ground. They can't get him hurt, or we will see Messer playing quarterback. I tell you, you're back to your, you're down to your second team quarterback, and you run him on a quarterback draw. On I don't first know. Down. That's a little dangerous, it isn't it? It is. There's Graham oh, Lee. Good job, buddy. Let's see if Dino knows what's going on there. Well, I sure do. It's a, a sprained ankle. The right ankle twisted out. Dave Binder, the trainer, retaping him. There's a pain concern look on Lee's face, but they're going to try to get him back in, I'm told. All right. There are some ankles, if any of you have ever played, there's just no way you can go. You can't tape it up. There's there not enough tape in the stadium to get you out there. Well, that last handoff you tried on that draw play, right. it looked like we'd have to get several rolls for that right leg, but we're going to... Keep an eye on that and whether or not Graham Lee, who was the offensive player of the year in the Mountain Division of the WAC, and there you see the pain look on his face. And again, here's how it happened. This was not a design draw or a design running play. It's so funny. So many quarterback coaches, you know, coaches around the country, you can see it. Joey Porter fell on his right leg. So worry about designing plays to run your quarterback, but you know, most of the injuries happen on pass plays uh, when you're in the pocket or yeah. scrambling out of a play. Colorado State will be going back to Fort Collins tonight while the Lobos are going to hang around. As Coach Francioni said, you know, we're going to be all business, and then after the game, we get to be in Vegas and have some fun. I don't know if Graham, he might be limping around to have right. his fun tonight. You're right. They're going to have to bring the fun to him. Yeah. <laughs> First and 10. Colorado State, we're tied at 10 32. Remaining in the half. Long handoff. Damon Washington trying to weave his way through some traffic and does pretty well at it. Out across the 20 to the 21. Got about four. Jason Purvis made a tackle. Brad, you know, this Lobo defense is very unique. Gary Patterson, the defensive coordinator, signals in the defense, but the New Mexico team does not huddle. They just look over to the sideline. The defensive back, Gary Patterson, right there, will signal it in. And really, everybody just looks at the sideline. Everybody has to see it, and they signal in something to the front and something to the secondary differently. And the linebackers have to turn around to the secondary and find out what their coverage responsibility is. At the 21-yard line, second down at six. Three wideouts all to the right side of Moreno, and they'll run it the other way. Washington and Damon Washington tiptoes out after he got a first down. Needed to get to the 27, and he goes out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. So they'll move the chains. Eric Bailey led the way. I said to Gary Patterson, hey, you must have smart guys then if they all have their own read. You don't have one guy calling the plays out there. And he did agree. He says, you got to know the defense. And part of what really helps him is that secondary, the five guys in the secondary are all experienced players. They're all Texas natives, as a matter of fact. And yes. They're pretty uh, pretty sharp back There's here. three things. They're sharp and, and something even more important than that. They're all fast. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> the, the slowest guy runs 4-5. First down, Colorado State. Moreno. Oh, a dangerous pass, incomplete, intended for Ewell, the tight end. Moreno made a big mistake that time. He was late with that hot throw that time. The tight end turned around. Billy Austin was deep in the secondary. There was a blitz to the outside. By the time Moreno read it, Billy Austin had time to get there and knock it down, almost intercept it. You know, Dean Moses has been talking a little bit this week about being able to throw on New Mexico, too. Well, he really has. He was quoted in the paper earlier, and it became bulletin board material. He was saying that he thought that his receivers could get separation on the cornerbacks over here. And I think that uh, some of their cornerbacks apparently read the Denver papers pretty well. <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm, I'm going to be really surprised if Lee returns. That, that, that appears to be an injury that's going to knock him out. All right. Shotgun. They fake the draw. They throw it out. Oh, almost for McCoy. He had a head of steam. And the Lobos, as Gary said, fast back there, tracked him down. Well, you know, Moreno said he could throw deep on these guys. We don't know yet. That's right. We have not seen Colorado State throw the ball downfield. And as you look, you know, nine uh, halfway through the second quarter, I think that's a mistake from this Colorado State team. They have not put any spread in this defense by saying we're going to throw the ball downfield. When we talked to Steve Fairchild yesterday, he said, you know, Gary, we're going to do it four or five times a game. That's just our style. Frank Rice goes out wide. 
to the top of your screen. Nobody's covering the wide receiver out there. That's the guy, Rice, and Rice is waving his hands out there, and now Moreno in trouble. And he's going to run with it. He's got a first down. Took a big hit again at the 40. But he picked up the first down. You're exactly right. Frank Rice, redshirt freshman, out to the top of the screen was all by his lonesome. He was, and Billy Austin, who was supposed to be in the middle of the field that time, saw Coach Patterson just losing it on the sideline that time and finally just ran over there and said, all right, I'll try to it. cover him. You know? <laughs> That's Steve Fairchild, first-year defensive uh, offensive coordinator for the Rams, and he, uh, ironically, was coached at New Mexico. That's right. He was on Mike Shepard's uh, Lobo staff there three years, a couple of those as offensive coordinator. Three wideouts again for Moreno. First down to work with now. Let's see if they go long. Down the middle, it's intercepted. Picked off by McGarrahan. He's got a convoy in front of him. All the way inside the 20-yard line. Scott McGarrahan, penalty marker back at about the spot where the interception was made. I think Moses Moreno that time read the play long that time. Brian, Brian Olacher made the play, but you know, Corey McCoy that time had a touchdown if Moreno would have just waited and thrown the ball downfield. I wonder if it was blocking after the interception might what's be. going to be the flag. That might be post-possession penalty. You cannot block below the waist. Personal foul oh, wow. on Colorado State. Well, that's going to tack on to it also. Oof. Where the flag was thrown, it's kind of a weird spot there because you assume when it was way back near the area where the interception was Rem made with the flag. Remember, Colorado State leads the NCAA in turnover margin, and we talked about the Lobos needing some turnovers, and so far, the first one of the game goes this way. Here's McCoy right here. He is going to run the post. Blitz is going to come this way. Here's the guy that makes the interception. Watch how open McCoy's gonna be if this ball is just thrown down the middle of the field. This was not a hot receiver. There was no need to throw the slant on the play. That was a misread by the quarterback. That was a late hit that time. There was the penalty. Cesario got him out of bounds and tacking on the yardage. So it's first and goal. And again, the quarterback this time almost stumbled with a handoff again, and that's Jaworski. And they're run out of bounds. Right near the line of scrimmage. Not much on the play. Sonny Lubick is not a happy coach on the sideline. No, it's just one of those things. Moreno has been a, a little bit off his game. One time he didn't read the hot and he was late with it. That time he thought he had a hot, and if he would have lofted the ball up a little bit, he would have had a touchdown. And you can see Dennis Franchoni has made a career of turning programs around by getting turnovers. Let's see if he'll let... The red shirt freshman quarterback throw the ball, or they're just going to keep trying to pound it. Again, he's in for Graham Lee, who's out with an injury. Second and goal at the seven. Option. He got the pitch out there late. Johnson handles it and score. So they turn the interception into six points. Reginald Johnson from seven yards out. The same option play that Graham Lee made a lot of yardage. Quarterback going to turn, come right down the line of scrimmage this time. But the defensive end that time, Clark Hagens, is not blocked. This play should not have worked. Ransom should have made the tackle. They had Colorado State had numbers on the play, but a little better runner than a tackler. Yep. Colby Kaysen. Graham Lee is back in there to hold here. Yeah, He's you can do that. Older. You can do that. And the extra point is good. So he can do that much. That might be all he can do the rest of the day, but his team got a turnover and a touchdown. There are two sides to every Monte Carlo. you show the world is up to you get 2.9 percent apr financing or up to 750 cash back on monte carlo during chevy's year-end event they were really growing up fast too fast 
All Kelly talked about was going to high school, and all I could think about was paying for college. Sure, I played around with a few mutual funds, but I was no expert. So I started talking to someone who could help, a broker at Dean Witter. We must plan for our client's future as if it were our own. Funny. Kids think their parents always have the right answers. I'm just making sure I do. We measure success one investor at a time. Full throttle. Maximum intensity. High energy. When it comes to drama and excitement, Western Athletic Conference teams deliver the total package. Whether it's high-scoring aerial attacks or hard-hitting defensive stands, WAC teams know the way to play. Catch the action. Promotional consideration provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of ABC Sports. Well, a touchdown for the Lobos, thanks to an interception that took them down to a first and goal, and they only needed two plays to go eight yards. And it was Reginald Johnson with a seven-yard touchdown. Yeah. It's a play that worked that shouldn't have worked with poor execution from Colorado State. And really starting this game, the Rams are very physical, but their execution is very poor, and that's why they're trailing. We'll show you why that play should not have worked after Mike Ross kicks off. Hall fields it two yards deep, had some indecision, and now brings it out. Aaron Hall. And he got out to the 20 three yard line maybe the 24. let's look at that touch up first of all this is clark hagan's he should be blocked he should not force the pitch but watch when this option goes he forces the pitch the play shouldn't work here's the corner ranson right here his receiver had come in to block he should be right here to make this play watch this johnson gets inside him creases it that's poor execution that was a well defense play it should not have scored Double breakdown on the play, and they still get seven points out. Moses Moreno's been ineffective so far. And starts from the 24-yard line. It's three out of six. Been sacked a couple of times and knocked around in that backfield. McDougal. McDougal has seemed the freshest of the Rams so far, and he got almost five. Well, you know, we saw Moreno early in his career. We saw him yesterday. We said, Moses, you know, we saw you at your worst, maybe, against <laughs> Kansas State. Five for 24, you know, when really Colorado State was a little bit outmatched in that football game, threw two interceptions, 91 yards, and now he's turned it around to have a great career. I still think Moses will get it going here, but Steve Fairchild in the offense needs to let him throw the ball deep. There's nobody downfield for this New Mexico defense. They need to test these corners. Two tight ends. And he hesitates and goes over the middle. That was a nice pass. He waited until McDougal came free, and they got a first down out at the 44-yard line. So McDougal gets the first down. McDougal's played a little bit of everything this year. They've even put him in the secondary at times this season. Multi-purpose back. He really is. He's had four 100-yard games, and he's averaging 6.6 .6 on a carry this year. As Colorado State is again featuring four wideouts. First down from the 44 with 6.48 remaining in the half. And McDougal again. First down run for McDougal. Down near the 45. Give him 11 more before Kenny Lewis can bring him down. Well, that's the matchup that Steve Fairchild felt was in his favor. He questioned whether the Lobos could stop his offensive line that goes nearly 300 pounds across the, the line against the undersized Lobo defensive front five, and he has not gone away from his game plan yet, still running the ball. Under six and a half minutes remaining in the quarter and now the Rams back in the Lobo end of the field at the 45 yard line. Moreno nice play fake throws incomplete behind Turner. That's one he's going to want to have back also that time Moreno had Turner wide open on that play and did not throw it very well. The amazing thing is Moses Moreno one of the highest ranked passers in the country and I mean that's some pretty serious territory when you're without 
But Cade McNown and Ryan Leaf and those guys, and Graham Lee, who is injured for the Lobos, also in the top five in the pass efficiency rating. How's Jaworski? Because <laughs> that's mean Ron? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know Ron. <laughs> yeah, we know Ron. We don't know Eric as well. <laughs> there he is. They have a seven point lead, though, thanks to their defense. Second and ten. Again, the play action. And again, they go right back to the same play, and this one's broken up. And he again threw it behind him. That's a very tough catch. When you're running into the quarterback like that on that angle, the quarterback really has to have a good throw to you because when it's behind you, it's very, very difficult to catch. Moreno this time, little play action fake. Now watch the ball behind his receiver, nose down. Turner has to turn around and catch it. Yes. He could have made the Catchable, catch, but it could have made it, but McDonald's going to be right on him, the best cover guy in the whack, and he landed right on top, and the ball pops loose. And Ramos is a guy that some of that talk from Colorado State was aimed toward. They said, we think we can get deep on McDonald's. So right now, Ramos is the one that has something to boast about. Colorado State doesn't with their passing game yet. Third yeah, ten, there they go long, and incomplete out of bounds, Darren Hall, the intended receiver. Jamel Woods that time had perfect coverage, but the pass allowed him to have perfect coverage. The ball was five yards out of bounds and really didn't have an opportunity to even get threatened on the play. So it's going to force a punt now. McDougal has really been the only offense for Colorado State. Preston Lowe's to kick, and that's Chad Smith. Not flashy, but dependable. Good hands, and he'll be waiting to fair catch this if he can. This one, he lets it go. Maybe he could have tried to catch it. Down at the two-yard line. Very interesting. Colorado State worked very hard before the game on downing punts inside the 10, and it's paid off right here. And it is. It's put the Lobos in a hole 43 yard kick drop down and down at the two yard line jones got down there on the special teams and now new mexico with a backup quarterback and working from their own end zone basically well i think sonny lubick would be very disappointed if his defense allowed new mexico to get off the goal line here with the number two quarterback in the game very dangerous spot to be in Dion marion is the tailback in the eye They'll give it to the fullback. Line of scrimmage, that's it. Shelton kind of dives over the pile as far as he can. He maybe got a foot out of it. And there's Graham Lee heading to the locker room. You know, there are some injuries that you can get fixed and play in a game. A sprained ankle is not one of them. If it's so bad, you know, there's nothing you can do medically, tape-wise, or, or whatever, you're just, if it's that bad, you're out. And it won't feel good again until the bowl game. I now, guess. he's going to need the handicap parking tonight, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Second down, and this time they get a little bit of room to work out across the five near the six-yard line as Marion, Rick Crowell, the linebacker, made the hit. And we're down to the five-minute mark in the second quarter with New Mexico leading 10-3, courtesy of an interception that they took down, plus a personal foul penalty that set them up at the eight-yard line of Colorado State, and they took it in from there. I think uh, Dennis Franchoni would love to get out of this first half with a seven-point lead right now, regroup in the halftime, and pick out some plays for their backup quarterback. Well, Jaworski quarterback draw. He won't even let him throw it, and he stumbles out to the nine, maybe the ten. And now Colorado State should get excellent field position yeah. regardless of this punt. You know, in a normal situation with a backup quarterback, that's a pretty safe call. But when you are already got your other guy injured, that's a little bit dangerous. I wonder why you just wouldn't give it to the running back in that case and, and, draw play. and run a draw play. Yeah. So Jason Bloom, they could call him Boom the way he's been kicking so far today. He's hit him a mile in the air. He's set to punt another one. Darren Hall is counting the guys on his side. And he waits out near midfield. Return on. This one bounces across midfield, and that's about it. Out at the 49-yard line. Well, you talk about tremendous defense. And the Lobos have allowed only 
One touchdown in the last 10 quarters. It was this one. Federick going to the end zone. That wasn't bad coverage. No, that was pretty <laughs> good coverage. And it's a hot defense coming into this game, a defense that believes in himself. And, uh, you know, Gary told us that uh, we feel we've got a game plan together that can handle their tendencies and feel good. When you only give up seven points, you do feel good about it. All backups, you know, you think they don't believe in their system? All the backups are in right now. Two tight ends set, Damon Washington. He got the corner. Down the sideline, Washington inside at 20. He's gone. Touchdown. <laughs> Might want to bring the first string back in. <laughs> 51 yards for a touchdown for Damon Washington. Well, we can't set it up any better than that for Gary Patterson. We talked about only giving up seven points. We talked about his system of believing in his backups. But here right now, Colorado State uses their power and says, whoop, we make one block. Mike Newell, Steve Dundee come around, and Damon Washington gets in the secondary, and that's why Colorado State is so tough to defense. They can throw it, they run it. We've been tied once today, and Derek Franz will try to tie us up again. And does, and then. 344 left in the half. 10-10 in this WAC championship. Let's check in in New York with John Saunders. John? All right, Brad, alongside Todd Blackledge. And coming up, we'll have a preview of the SEC and the Big 12 championship game. Yeah, we'll take a look at the bowl scenarios for those four teams. We'll also take a look at one of the four guys invited to the Heisman presentation, Marshall wide receiver Randy Moss. All right, it's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. Back to the game. Brad? All right, guys, thanks. We look forward to hearing from you at halftime, which is 3.43 away. 10-10 tie. Damon Washington just went 51 yards for a touchdown. Brad, it was interesting when we were talking to Gary Patterson about playing so many guys. He plays 11 defensive linemen and uh, tackles an end, three linebackers, and we go, you know, do you do anything different when you have your backups? He says, no, I don't even want to know when they're in the football game. Just, I call the defenses. Who's ever out there, they have to make it go. They just didn't make the tackle on the corner, and when you do that against Damon Washington, you got to watch out because he has great speed, which he showed down the sideline. So now the kick upcoming. C.W. Hurst has teed it up. Reginald Johnson and Jamie Oliver await for the Lobo. Again, high kick. Johnson at the 15. Oh, what a nice open field tackle that was. John Howell came flying down there on the special teams and drops him inside the 15-yard line. Well, we got a 10-10 football game. We got two 9 and two football teams. You talked about how they're mirror images. When you look at the common opponents, you can see pretty common scores, oh, I really. I mean, they, they both routed Tulsa. They, you know, 36 and 38 points against San Diego State. I mean, these two teams are even, and now the Lobos are going with a backup quarterback. And that might take away the evening right yeah, there. Yeah, I think that might put the balance one way. Or at least have an impact on the afternoon, if not the evening. And they whistle this one dead. Penalty markers down. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yards, still first down. What they can't keep doing, New Mexico, that is, is having this poor field position with a backup quarterback and not allowing him to try some things. So this is a tough spot. Yeah, Dennis Darnell is the coordinator of this offense. You know, they had Donald Sell Seller, Stoney Case, yep. Graham Lee. So, you know, they've had success with a lot of different quarterbacks here. you got to give the credit to the coach when that happens. I suspect as Jaworski gets his feet a little more solidly planted here, he'll start to make plays. But with 3.30 to go, I think the Lobos right now are just trying to get out of the hat. You're right. And with Shelton, the fullback, running there for maybe a yard if he's lucky. Willie Taylor again made the tackle. You can really see the balance of this game has, has really shifted as Graham Lee's ability to run the option, throw, do all the different things, kept that Ram defense off balance. Now they're zeroing in. They are really ready to handle the ball carry and put pressure on Jaworski. Well, they let him put it up here. Four wide outs. Nope, draw play to Gordon. And he got only a yard or two. Adrian Ross made the first contact. Greg Pollard cleared up, uh, cleaned up rather. Whew. I'll tell you, Clark Hagens and Adrian Ross, they can cut. Yep. They, they really are the strength of this football team. When we were talking to Larry Curd, he was talking about those guys. We go, 
are they as good as Sean Moran and Brady Smith, their two corner bookstone defensive ends before he goes, guys, these guys are players. Yeah. And, and, and I can see it. They really run. Well, the two guys they had were maybe more the NFL prototype right. type rush ends. These guys play hard and they're showing it again today. 246 remaining in the half. Let's check in on some other primetime shows on ABC. Here's to the funny one, the misfit, the beauty, the long legs and the short dress. You can quote her, disagree with her, but most of all, you'll love her. And while some people may see her as silly, we see genius. Because the people who think they're funny enough to change television are the ones who do. She's a piece of work. 10-10 <laughs> with 2.46 left in the half. And uh, that'll make you rub your chin. If you're a head coach and you had the player of the year, your quarterback go down in a championship game in your conference, your backup's in there. He's standing inside his own 10 and it's third down and 12. Now he will throw. Maybe. Nope. Now he goes. Pollard hit him in the backfield and he went down. Well, Colorado State again just stuck with their game plan. They're going to drop back into zone coverage. There's four wide receivers. The back's going out to make five. And you watch these guys. They're just going to drop back. The linebacker's going to drop back. Eight people, no, seven people, excuse me, just looking at the quarterback and saying, where are you going to throw the ball? We're going to watch. We're going to run to the spot. Jaworski right now does not have the confidence to throw the ball. Eric needs to just settle down. At halftime, I'm sure he will. And they're going to say, hey, win or lose, you got to do it, yep. you know? That time they gave him the opportunity, but he didn't get rid of it. And now it's another punt. Second straight, three and out. Eric has only played 41 snaps this year, so... You know, it's not, uh, as, he, as he gains more confidence, I think you'll see as a Redford shirt freshman say, hey, I got to let it go. Right. He's 0 for 3 on the season throwing the football coming into this, so he has had no experience, basically. And now, time to punt for Jason Bloom from his own end zone. Darren Hall, again, near midfield, waiting on it. Hall might have a chance at this one. Oh, he has to let it bounce. And now one of the oh, other hi. Colorado State players, that is very dangerous, yep. Daryl Franklin jumps up and makes the grab. Daryl Franklin <laughs> made a big mistake there, but he got away with it. Yeah, he did. You might have seen on the side of the Lobos helmets uh, sticker, it's for a very special reason. Dean's got more on that. Right. You know, Brad, this season has been an emotional roller coaster for New Mexico. Up, they're nine and two, but down, and actually the down began on August the fourth. Jamine Roselle, Jr., tragically drowned on August the fourth, and this team dedicated the season to Jr. And I know Henrietta, his mother, is probably watching right now. I want you to know this team and the coaching staff definitely has you on their minds. Jameen's locker has been glassed off in the locker room of the Lobos. And Coach Franchoni was telling us yesterday that the team came up with the idea and hopes that it is not, and certainly I hope it's not either, an NCAA regulation against this, but they want to take Jameen's mom to their bowl game, wherever it may be, either in Tucson or in San Diego. As part of the club, that would be pretty nice, wouldn't it? Whoa, oh, there's man. a hit at the 45-yard line. <laughs> Ramos. 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 Hit Davis. <laughs> Davis bounced right back he up, did. though. You're in a two-minute offense. You have to. Yeah. Ooh, that was a nice lick. Third down and short. Pressure, McDougal out of the backfield, and there's another pretty good hit, and it's Erlacher. He's the guy that's probably going to end up being the best player on this football team. If he isn't already, he will be by next year. Well, Erlacher plays about half the time on this defense. Gets in there, and you saw he has speed and range as a linebacker. He's a big one, 6'4", 235, and he can run. And a timeout taken with 1.30 remaining. I think they're just going to take a measurement here to see if they got the first down. The officials will bring out the chains. It gives us a chance to remind you more college football coming up all day long on ABC Sports. It'll be the Aggies of Texas A&M, who we saw 
with a win over Texas last week for the Big 12 championship, taking on the Cornhuskers of Nebraska, ranked second in the country. Then later on tonight, the SEC championship, 8 o'clock Eastern time. That's right. You'll get another look at Peyton Manning, but you'll see a lot of Damian Craig as well as Auburn and Tennessee square off for the SEC title on championship Saturday on ABC Sports. Brad, it looks like they're going to be short by just four or five or six inches in this, but you know, when you look at Colorado State, they may be, besides the Graham Lee incident, getting into this football game as they go along. Remember, this is only their third game they've played in 27 days because of the bye before the San Diego State game and then the week off before this game. They've actually played one game in 27 days coming into this. So maybe they're just getting the feel of the game also. They've been a pretty good fourth down conversion club, 7 of 17 on the year. Here's a big one on fourth and inches. Moreno does it himself for the first down and keeps the drive alive with the clock running at 129. And he followed Mike Newell in center and Cesario is right guard and just powered his way forward. Don't forget, John and Todd are coming up with a Valvoline halftime 97, which is about a minute 26 seconds from now. On a four wide offense, Turner incomplete thrown a little bit behind him again. That's the third time they've aimed one at Paul Turner and he's yet to catch one. Ball again. I think Turner saw the defense.